Howdy there, folks. How are y'all doing? My name is Reese. And I'm a little frustrated right now. I'm more than a bit flustered. You see, I replaced some of the hardware in the capture PC to make it more reliable, uh, give it more PCIe lanes, so hopefully we don't run into a whole bunch of memory allocation issues that I've had in the past. And uh, as of right now, that computer is currently functioning. It is recording this video and everything seems to be going it just hunky dory, but uh, uh, the Windows is no longer activated on it. Now, I bought a genuine copy of Windows when I built this PC, and when I created the account for the computer, I did the, the Microsoft account instead of doing a local account. And the whole idea there is oh, you know, if you replace your hardware, sometimes you got to call the number, you got to do all this finagling to get it working. But no, if you sign up with your Microsoft account, hey, guess what? You can just say, hey, I replaced my hardware, sign in with your username and password, and boom, you're done. So that's what I did. It's like, hey, you replaced your mother, you need to reactivate Windows. And I said, no sweat. I signed it up with the Microsoft account. It'll be easy. So I go in there into the settings, and I'm like, yeah, I replaced hardware on this computer. And it's like, well, which computer is it? And I selected the Capture PC, and it's like, yeah, we can't, up, we can't activate Windows right now. <laughs> Sorry, we don't, know. It's a bit weird. we don't know what's going on here. Sorry about that. So I can't actually activate it. So the whole reason you sign up with that in the first place is just it's, it's a waste of time. Uh, so that's good to know. That's real good to know that that was all just a... Uh, uh, it, so it's not activated. It's not active. I'm going to try again later. It did say to try again later, so I'm going to try again later. I'm trying to look up at the screen and sort of monitor this as I'm going because this is the first video I've recorded with the new hardware. And let me just check and make sure all my filters are on. Yes, indeed. And then let me make sure that the, the actual settings here on the capture card are correct. Because I had to do a bit of a uh, bit of work to get everything back to where it was. I'm sure this is the sort of fun entertainment you wanted to see in the the 25 25 25 challenge. Yeah, okay, everything looks fine. Uh, well, when I throw it into the editor on a screen that is actually worth a darn, I'll be able to get a good look at whether or not this actually looks terrible <laughs> uh, when I move it over to the editing PC. But today we're going to continue work on the mayor's house. We have got our marble foundation. We're pretending it's bone. It's a foundation of bones. That's at least how we're envisioning this. And then I guess the rest of it has to be built out of lumber. I was thinking we needed to go find some like nice dark woods, though, because that seems super premium, and that's the sort of thing that this mayor would have. Also, and I don't know why, but when I walk away from playing this game, I continue to think about this game. And that's not something I'm super happy about. You know, it's not a fact that I'm proud of. Oh, wait, hold on. Weren't we by like a... A dense dark forest back this way when we spawned in I think that we were that might just be my imagination playing tricks on me but for some reason I walk away and I think of this world and I think of that darn mayor and I think about the Russians and I'm starting to think that maybe there's more going on here than we originally thought maybe the city isn't corrupt because of the 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 mayor and the local council maybe it is the Russians. Maybe there's some sort of secret plot going on over there, and it does, in fact, involve the children that go missing every year around Christmas. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to find out, though. We're going to keep doing some uh, investigative uh, investigative work. Can I cut this whole tree down if I, like, like charge this thing? How, how do I charge it? Is it V? Oh, wow. Wow. Now that is some impressive, but that doesn't cut the whole tree down, which is kind of what I was hoping. Oh, there you go. You right-click. So you can right-click to vein mine out the whole tree. Can I get some... Uh, oh, wow. Oh! Oh, I take it back. It doesn't just vein mine the whole tree. It, like, clears out a whole swath. Okay. Let's try that again. Wow. Wow. That is quite effective. That is extremely effective. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's power that back down, then. Let's, let's shift V to get that back down to a more reasonable level. And uh, let's not destroy the world. So we've got ourselves a good sampling now of the dark oak wood. Uh, so we'll throw that in there and we can get more of it as we need it. I hear the sound of a, a creeper. You'll excuse me for not being super worried about it. Because we are more or less mostly invulnerable, invincible, indestructible. And uh, I can do something like this and just be done with him. I still don't know what C does exactly. Someone might have left a comment by now. I don't know. Does this block, or does this do, like, an AoE if I right-click? It definitely doesn't block. Oh! Well, C does appear to do an AoE sometimes, at least. Is there anything else alive down here that I can test this on? No. This is just a dark cave with a very... Uh, a dark, dark, 
stubby cave, and at the end of it, the monsters spawn. Do y'all hear a ticking sound? Or is that me? I hear a ticking sound. Am I going crazy? Let's collect up all these little orbs. Really? The inventory full again? Oh yeah, I guess it would be. We got so much just garbage now. Uh, what what does this stuff turn into? What kind of planks does this make? Dark oak wood planks? Have I ever used these? Is that the chicken making that noise? What is that noise? We're getting out of here. I don't like it. This is a weird, like... Oh, you know what? It might be a predator. It's probably a predator in the woods. Let's go back to the weird mushroom tree. Hey, how'd y'all like that episode title? <laughs> Uh, big tree, gone wrong, gone mushroom. I thought it was good. It was a throwback to the old school days of uh, just really bad clickbait. Oh, wait. Are we capturing sound? Oh, yeah. It looks like we are. Okay. Just had to make sure. Had to be sure there. Because uh, you, you never you never can tell. Are we capturing it on the right channels? Again, I know. I, I did some setup prep before this, but it's just as soon as I hit the record button, I started thinking of all the... Small things. So, the way we're going to build this house is, I think, we'll start here at the door. We'll have something like this, these pillars here. And then those will be framing... Actually, hmm, I want to give the house a bit of depth. I feel like that's a, lot of, a thing that a lot of my builds are missing. Let's bring that back down so I can actually control what I'm doing here. So, if we did it like that... Yeah, that actually works. That adds a little bit of depth. I was going to move this forward, but I wasn't sure how that was going to work with sort of all the other things we got going on here. So we'll do that. And uh, none of this is permanent. I can always come back through here and change the design later if I decide I don't like this. The issue is the doors. Can we make a carpenter's door? Because I don't think we can make, yeah, all the different colored wood doors. But we can make a carpenter's door. And then we can make pretty much any door we want to from that. So we'll grab ourselves some sticks. I say, I say we'll grab ourselves some sticks, and then we just need to make the carpenter's block, which is like so. Sticks around really any kind of uh, plank. It doesn't have to be dark wood. I give us five of those bad boys, and we're going to need more than that. Let's grab, let's grab a stack. Leave the excess up here. And then we can make all kinds of cool things. So I think you can make stairs. Yeah. And then you can make doors. And the cool thing about these is... I don't know if you've ever seen them before. We used them in my original series. I'm going to put it back here so, again, we get a bit more depth. You can make it... Ah, uh, but then you see the marble floor sticking out the outside, so let's not do that. There we go. You can add the, the blocks in like this. And boom. Although I don't know if I really like the door being that that dark and blending in that well with the the surrounding wood. I sort of like the dark, wood, uh, the dark uh, oak wood, but I don't know if I really like the dark wood planks. Eh, we'll keep working with it. We'll see if it grows on us. Uh, although it shouldn't, because that would be that would be disturbing. If it started to grow on me like some sort of parasite, that would be more concerning than anything else. So we're going to put down our corner blocks here. And uh, I don't know if we're going to make this two-story. We might do like a faux two-story where it's just got a really highly pitched roof. I, I don't, I'm not going to go through and like super delicately decorate the inside of these places. Also, I was thinking, you know, what would be fitting for this place is if the mayor had this big fancy house and then everyone else lived in little hovels, kind of like these, uh, little one-bedroom shacks. I thought that would be really good. I thought that would be, uh, you know, it's sort of fitting with the the legend of the place that we've created, this, this horrible town, <laughs> this absolutely horrible town where children are kidnapped for Russian experiments underground where they're turning children into monster fighters. Ooh, ooh! I just had another idea. Okay, we'll hold on to that one. We'll hold on to that one. Of course, they're not experimenting on the local kids. That would be morally questionable. They're only experimenting on the kids whose parents come here for the big Christmas celebration every year. So remember, kids, if your parents are like, hey, do you want to go celebrate Christmas in the town with no name still? Someone might have suggested a name by now. I'm not sure. Uh, the, most of the videos that I've recorded, the backlog is pretty much clear. In fact, I think there's only one or two videos left. So you folks are right on the cutting edge right now of what's going on. Uh, if you want to leave a comment and, and let me know, that'd be great. We got to figure out how to do a window here. So let's do this first off. Kind of get the inside and then we can do a, a three by three window maybe. Or does the mayor want windows? Is that going to like let people see into his 
his secrets. I guess it's fine because it's filtered by a gate here. And really, these windows are just for show. When you look in, you're going to see what looks like your nice Minecraftian family dynamic. You know, uh, kids playing chess. Yeah, because they're smart kids. Smart kids play chess. Hashtag. And, you know, there's going to be like a mom. She's going to be making a chicken or something. Dad, the mayor is going to... No, no, it's just a dad. It's not even the mayor. He's going to be reading the newspaper. It's going to look like this nice dynamic because really everything else is happening in the basement that I'm not going to build. You're going to have to use your imagination and just picture the scary basement down below. There we go. All right, that's not too bad. Oh, and then you know what we can do? Hold on, we can get some leaves. And we can use those like bushes out front. So let's just get like a like five. No, let's get like a stack of them. I don't know why I'm wasting my time with this. Here we go. Look at that. So we can have bushes out front. I, I was thinking about doing flowers, and we could still do flowers, but bushes out front look kind of cool. Right on, right on. And then we need to add the glass. So what are my glass options? I know we've got glass panes, and we've got them in many different colors. We have a variety of glass pane colors. But should we just go with regular glass pane? Plain? Planes? <laughs> regular gas... <laughs> gas panes. Now, that makes sense, because, you know, sometimes you fill... You have, like, the two panes, and then there's argon in between them or something, and it helps stop heat or cold transfer. You know, keep your house colder in the summer, warmer in the winter, keep your electric bill down. It also helps stop noises from coming through. I, I know this because I've been looking into windows. I need new windows, like, a lot. Uh, these are, of course, facades that we're looking at right now, but you can just get panes of glass that have been painted. Here they are. Well, no, these are still facades. How do you get to just the glass pane? Is it is it this? Oh, yeah, okay, so you make the, these, obviously, up here. Uh, you, I guess you got to make the, the colored glass first, and then you turn it into a pane. I don't know if we really want to do that, though. I mean, what color would fit with this? I guess tinted windows? I mean, that's going to sort of ruin the family, the artificial family dynamic if the windows are tinted, but it does sort of fit the theme of the creepy mayor. So let's go with that. Let's get rid of some of these building materials. Let's get rid of this uh, mercurial eye or whatever it's called. These carrots and apples we're carrying around with us. Oh my gosh, we've just got so much stuff in our inventories. It's getting a bit out of hand. Let's get rid of all the fencing here. And then let's do a sort. There we are. Everything's a bit more manageable now. Everything that doesn't have an EMC value is, is gone. And now we can work on the glass. So we want to get huge stacks of glass. We want to get some ink. I think this is how you do it. I'm not going to verify. I'm just going to give it a try. Hey, look at that. Black stained glass. So we've got our tinted glass now. And now, then all we have to do is turn it into... Ah! <laughs> the black stained glass panes. We grab 32 of those for now. We can make more. But they don't have an EMC value, so... Oh, come on! No connected textures? Oh, you gotta be joking me right now. Why is connected texture such a hit or miss in this? I, I mean, hit or miss, I guess you never miss, huh? They're supposed to look like this. These facades here. This is, this is upsetting. Well, hello there, little spider. What are you doing out in the village? You're not allowed here. You might eat the children, and then the mayor and the Russians can I don't know why the Russians are the bad guys in this scenario. It's kind of back in vogue to make the Russians the bad guys, you know? Back in the 80s, Cold War and, well, the, the, <laughs> the death throes of the Cold War, you know, Russians were always the bad guys, and then it kind of switched to uh, 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 other people, we'll say, and we'll leave it at that. But I think now, you know, 80s culture is real big, sort of 80s pop culture, Stranger Things, the Russian. It's back in vogue for the Russians to be the bad guys again. So, you know, I, that's what I'm going with. I am taking a lot of inspiration from Stranger Things Season 3 here with the Russians being the bad guy and the mayor being involved. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe, maybe that's too... That's too on the nose. For right now, let's drop the story and let's focus more on the house. I want to get the house finished this episode. We're, we're running out of time. I just noticed I didn't set a timer. So when I say we're running out of time, I mean I don't know how much time we have left. Um, I'm just going to just gonna keep going and see where we get here. So now i got to figure out how to do the roof. I've never been good at roofs in Minecraft. I'm real bad at Minecraft in general. For those of you who haven't caught on yet, I've been playing it since 2009, I believe. 
and I'm just not good at it. But let's give this a try. Let's do this sort of traditional, though the roof does a this. You know what I'm talking about? You'll know what I'm talking about. Here we go. And we're going to do just like an arched roof. It's going to look a bit like a cabin. I don't know. Maybe the mayor grew up in a cold climate and the cabin makes him think of home and those cold days he'd spend with his, you know, his mama and they'd make soup together and they'd, they'd cuddle up and she'd talk about how someday dad was going to come home. He was just out to get cigarettes. He'll be back soon. And, uh, you know, he loved those memories with his mama before, you know, the cancer got her. Oof, poor kid. And then, of course, he was homeless for a while in the streets in the cold. But uh, eventually he found an abandoned house on the edge of town that he could call his own. And he sort of moved in and he, he lived there for a while, you know, until the rightful owners came by. They just purchased the property. Turns out, you know, whoever owned it before had defaulted on the taxes or something. And he, um, you know, the, 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 someone else had bought it now. It belonged to, to someone else, new owners and all of that. And they were going to have it bulldozed. And they were going to build a casino in its place because there's some money in that, you know. The state had recently decided that, uh, you know, additional funding, additional source of recom, uh, income would be to allow gambling and tax it. So, you know, they've, they've uh, legalized gambling and they're building a big casino here, these guys. And they find this kid living in the basement and they're like, ah, oh, get out of here, you little street urchin. And they try to kick him out. Bless him. They try to kick him out. But he's like, oh, I've got to die if it's cold outside. Like, uh, good points. So they say, you know what, kid? We're going to let you live here. We're going to let you live here in the casino, and you can work here in the casino. And we'll pay you uh, a little bit below minimum wage, which we can get away with, because really no one knows you exist. You're not, you don't have any parents. You're not a ward of the state. You're just sort of this homeless orphan living in the basement. We can, we sort of like a bit of a quasi-moto. We'll raise you, but also put you to work. So he works in the casino, you know, he cleans the rooms, he he actually, he's a bit mechanically minded, this kid, does he need a name? We'll call him Dave. Dave, he's a bit, ex- he's, he's a bit, he's mindful of machinery and whatnot, he likes to tinker with the machines when they're broken, they roll them around back, and uh, he figures out how to fix one of the slot machines. Unfortunately, he does mess up the internal logic, so the slot machine never actually uh, pays out big money. And he's like, oh, no, I guess I've ruined it now. But then the owner finds out, and he's like, hey, kid, you've just rigged the slot machine so that it never pays out big money. I appreciate that. I'm giving you, I'm giving you a raise, and I'm giving, you, I'm giving you a new position. You have to rig all the machines so that none of them ever pay out big money. And so, you know, this the kid's sort of like, isn't that sort of morally questionable? Because his mom, bless her heart, before she died uh, from the cancer... Uh, she did, she did try to teach him morals and values and, and he knows, you know, it's wrong to cheat people out of money, but, uh, here's the thing, you know, this guy, he had to, he had to get it from somewhere, this questionable, this, this mayor with questionable morality had to learn these questionable morals somewhere. Well, no, you don't. I think most people are born with, uh, you're, you're born, it's complicated. You know, you you know what is right and wrong based on how you feel when someone wrongs you, but you're not necessarily taught how to... You have to be taught how to treat others. Like, it should be second nature, right? If someone takes from you, even as a small child, you're like, that's wrong. I want that back. You know, we have that sort of instilled morality. But if you're not taught, hey, don't take from others, you're not going to make those connections by yourself. And he, he was taught, you know, to... Uh, to, to be respectful of others and to not take what's not his by his mother. Uh, but this new guy's like, look, kid, it's a harsh world. The cancer got your mom. If only you'd had a bit of extra money f- for treatment, maybe she would have been okay. Now, she wouldn't have been. She was she was terminal. They, they would have been too late by the time they found it. But he doesn't know that. He's not an expert in medicine, this kid. Uh, he only knows how to <laughs> sort of happenstantially rig these machines to never do a big payout. So he's like, oh man, maybe you're right. Maybe I got to do whatever it takes to look out for myself. So he starts to rig the machines. The casino makes a lot of money. Uh, but then one day there's an investigation by the state into whether or not these machines have been rigged. And the guy's like, remember, kid, they've not been rigged. You got to lie to them. Remember, it's okay to lie if it, pro- uh, if it progresses your own personal agenda. And the kid's like, yeah, you're right. And they come in there and they're like, hey, have these machines been rigged? He's like, yep, and I did it. Like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I only did what my boss told me to. Dun, dun, dun. Casino owner, straight out to jail. 
new kid, kid on the block. He's been siphoning money off on the side. He buys the casino. He owns it now. And he uses that money. He invests that money into a, a campaign to become mayor of the small town. Once he's mayor, he, uh, he has the place bulldozed to uh, hide the evidence. And he has the, the owner uh, executed by an inmate. Um, you know, that sort of thing happens. You pay one of the inmates to, hey, you know what? It's a wild night in the prison. Not, the guards aren't, you know, they're, they're stretched thin uh, because the mayor intentionally pulled some of the guards out of the prison that day. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a bit of a riot, and, oh, what do you know, that guy ends up dead. Well, I mean, certainly wasn't targeted, was it? You know, it's just a happenstantial sort of situation. You know, who would have targeted this guy? So, it did no investigation, no one really thinks or cares too much about it, and uh, now this kid, you know, he's got his sight, he's the mayor, and maybe he's got his sight on, on a bigger goal. Maybe he wants that big house on the edge of town. So he starts plotting and planning. He goes over. He visits the woman who owns it. He's like, I love this house. Would you be interested in selling? Because he's still got all that money from when he bulldozed down the casino. Well, he sold all the machines first. He sold those off to uh, various different other casinos. And uh, he kept all of the the, the money from the... Because, you know, it, eh, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure where he got the money. Maybe we'll have to work on that later. But he's got a lot of money. He's like, I'll buy the house from you. She's like, I don't ever want to sell this house. You know, you'll have to wait till I die. And he goes, well, I won't be waiting long then, as she mysteriously dies the next day. Uh, and then he buys the big house in the edge of town. And he's like, okay, well, what next? Uh, I need to exact my revenge on my deadbeat dad. So he tracks him down. First off, turns out dad... Oh, this is where the real tragic story gets. And you could argue that a lot of the things that caused this kid who became mayor... What was his name? Dave? I think we chose Dave. A lot of the things that led Dave crazy... Uh, you could tra track back to the fact that his father abandoned him. Or did he? Uh, come to find out, actually, Dave's dad really did go to the store to buy cigarettes. And uh, while he was there, he was kidnapped. And <laughs> hauled off to the French Foreign Legion to fight a war. And, uh, you know, he manages to track down his dad. He's, he's blind. He's, his body is broken. The war has, uh, has left him rendered sort of uh, in, a, in, a, in a state where he didn't want to go back to his son because he didn't want his son to see him like this. And his son tracks him down in this little French villa. And he's like, Papa, my son. Papa, my son. Papa, my son. Die. And then he, uh, he killed his own dad. It's real rough. It's a real rough situation, you know. But you gotta feel for the kid. You gotta. I mean, what would you do? Uh, he, um, he, you know, it's a shame. You know, the father was right. He really shouldn't have let his son see him in this condition because his son is just ashamed at the sight of him, and he, uh, he does away with him. It's it's pretty rough. I'm trying to figure out what to do with this roof here. So yeah, you know, a little bit of the. Uh, what is that ticking sound? Do y'all hear that? Is that the chicken? Chicken, where are you? Ticking sound is gone. Now that the chicken's gone. Why is there a ticking sound with the chicken? Like the chicken's going to blow up. I don't get it. I don't know. No, a lot of this story is non-canon. I don't really know where I'm going with a lot of it. I, I'm not even really sure why Dave killed his dad at this point. Was it to so save the embarrassment going back home, knowing that his father was uh, blind, deaf, and mute? Would that be something Dave would do? I mean, it's not really embarrassing. I mean, he lost all of those abilities in the war. If anything, he'd be treated like a war hero. But then again, Dave's not really right in the head. You know, Dave's got this sort of obsession with perfection, you know? Because as a kid, his mom, you know, one of the things she did to keep him occupied because they couldn't afford any sort of real entertainment was she, she pushed him to clean a lot. She's like, oh, we got to scrub all the dishes and clean all the floors. And the reason she did that was just to keep his mind busy, to keep him occupied because they couldn't afford to buy Monopoly or, or Uno or anything like that. They were, they were right on, you know, the, the razor's edge of being able to uh, buy food in the next month. So, you know, she did what she could 
to make sure that he was well cared for and uh, and occupied. She kept him occupied, which is noble. And you know, but he and his little child brain sort of misinterpreted that to believe that hey, cleanliness is essential and perfection is essential. He became a bit of a a deranged perfectionist. And when he sees his dad in sort of a less than perfect state, it sort of triggers him. He's like, no, 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 no. Mom would want me to clean. Clean the mistakes. Clean. Yeah, he's he's a bit crazy, Dave. Bless his heart. No, or I don't know. He's, he's insane. Maybe. Well, I mean, look, maybe he's a bad guy. Maybe he does bad things, but you should still have some pity for the guy. I mean, it's not his. Well, no. Okay, his choices are his fault. But the condition that led to... I don't know where any of this is going. I feel like I'm just saying nonsense at this point. What I'm trying to say is it's a tragic story about how a bad guy became the worst guy. Ah, okay. Does that does that work there? Does that look terrible? I can't decide. I think it looks bad, but we're going to stick with it because I, I don't want to do any more work on these. I feel like I've been working on these for most of the video. There we go. Yeah, all right, that's the upstairs now. Decision has been made. Ah, it looks decent enough. Should I have done one in the middle? I think there's room for one in the middle. Oh, but it's it's odd number. Oh, no, it's even numbered, so we could do one, two, three, four, five. We could fit one more in the middle there, but I think it looks better without the one more in the middle. So we'll work on these over here. We'll make them look the same out the back, and then we'll move on to other projects. So let's break down what we know about Dave so far. Dave was born into a nice little mom-dad family dynamic. Everything was fine. Everything was, uh, you'd almost say it was Gucci if you were so inclined, but you don't want to say that because that just sounds dumb. Like no one should ever say that. If you do say that on a daily basis, I've got news for you. Now is the time to change and you can change. Your friends and your family will help you move on from saying things are Gucci. Uh, quite honestly they should have never let you get to this state to begin with but he grew up everything was good his dad went out for cigarettes one day and never came back because he was drafted into the french foreign legion had to go out and fight in a war and uh, in that war he lost his eyes his ears his nose his mouth both arms and both legs most people would consider this guy a hero because he did save a battalion of men in the process see what had happened was he jumped on a nuke to stop it from uh, exploding and Probably a pro probably a uh, 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 no. I was gonna say Russian nuke, but then why would the would Dave be working with the Russians? He jumped on the nuke, and it turns out his body pressure landing on top of the nuke somehow caused it to malfunction, and it didn't actually blow up the way it was supposed to. So instead of destroying a uh, hundred mile radius, it just kind of destroyed Dave's dad, Dave Senior. Kid's name's Dave Junior. I've made that decision now, and he's like, oh, he's a hero. We don't know who he is, though, so the whole town that he's in sort of adopts him, and he can't really communicate with him, so he's never ever, he's never ever able to tell them about his family and how he wants to go home and see his son, and how he wants his son to be proud of him for what he's accomplished. Uh, that's why he's in the city. That's why he never contacts his kid. It's not because he doesn't want his son to feel shame. He wants his son, his son to know what he's done, but uh, he just can't communicate with the people, so... He, he lives in this village and, you know, eventually someone, <laughs> blessed if someone finally checks his wallet and sees like an ID card and they call up the, the authorities and they get in touch with Dave and Dave goes to see his dad and is like, well, here's the problem. In his dad's absence, he and his mom, you know, they, they went into a life of poverty. They can't really afford to, to buy games or anything. So his mom keeps him occupied by having him clean the house a lot. And he associates cleanliness and perfection with, you know, necessity. And he sees his dad, this war hero who has been ravaged by a, a atomic bomb, a nuclear warhead that didn't go off correctly. And he's like, this is not perfect. This is not perfect at all. Also, his mom died from the cancer. So he has been living alone in the basement of an abandoned building, an abandoned house that didn't get to bulldoze and turn into a casino, which he then takes over. I'm liking this house more and more. It's, start, it's starting to grow on me and on the landscape as <laughs> it expands off in both directions. Uh, so, you know, Dave, he is... Where was I going with that? Oh, yeah, he sees his dad and he's like, well, this is not perfection. So he's like, I'm taking dad home with me. So they load up on a plane. Then halfway along the route, the plane's... The pilot uh, is mysteriously 
pass, passes out, probably because of lack of oxygen, probably because Dave strangled him to death. It's a tragedy, I tell you. And uh, then Dave, you know, he has to fly the plane. So he sort of ditch, just drops the, the body of the pilot out the window of the plane. It slows down enough so that it doesn't cause explosive decompression. What kind of plane is it? I don't know. It's like a single engine private jet situation. Maybe he lands it on an island and he he's like, I can't kill you, dad, but I can leave you here. So he does. He leaves his dad there on this little island in the middle of nowhere, along with the now dead pilot. And uh, I mean, fortunately for Dave's dad, you know, he's taken in by the locals on this island and they mistake him for for a god. It's a bit of a primitive people. They mistake him for a god. So he's fine. He's taken care of. 